Welcome to class tonight. I do hope that you all are having a great night. And uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, we're working on lesson 3-4. We're covering equivalent fractions tonight. We're going to be learning about fractions. This really starts our discussion of fractions. Now, I see the word equivalent, and you say, wow, that looks like a big, scary word. But really, you should hear the word equal in the word equivalent. You hear that word right there? Equivalent is simply a very big word for equal. That's it. So we're going to be talking about fractions that are equal. So let's go ahead and start tonight. We're going to start over here. Uh, we're going to start with some fractions right there. I want to start very concrete with actually pictures we can move around. So right here we're going to call this one half because I have two sides. One, one is shaded right here. That's two fourths. Two are shaded, four total, and here I have three six. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's something very interesting about all of these fractions. If I were to do this right here, you say, oh, wow, they cover the exact same area. They are not, they are the same fraction. They cover the exact same area. Same with three six. I look at this right here, and I'm like, oh, wow. It covers up the exact same amount of area. So we would say all of these fractions are equivalent. Now I'll show you something. So that's the, the, the picture way. Now I'm going to show you with math. With math I can tell they're equivalent if I can multiply or divide by the exact same number and get that fraction. Let me put it like this. Can I multiply one half by some number and get two fourths? That's my question. So let's think. One half to two fourths. Ooh, if I multiply both sides by two, one times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. So look at that. These are equivalent fractions because I can multiply by the exact same number and get that fraction. Let's go ahead and check this last one now, 3, 6. I'm going to erase this on purpose. For 3, 6, let's see. Can I multiply or divide 1 half by some number and get 3, 6? Let's see. Hmm. Ooh, I can multiply by 3. 1 half times 3 equals 3. Or sorry, 1 times 3 equals 3. 2 times 3 equals 6. So look at that. I can multiply and divide, or multiply by the same number and get this fraction. So that means 1 half and 3 sixths are equivalent. And I showed you that by simply doing that right there. It covers the exact same amount of area. Let's do a couple. Oh, oh my. Let's do a couple more. Alright, so right here I have two more fractions. Right here I have two thirds. And right here I have four. Six. So my first test is, can I put them together, and are they equivalent? Bam. They are. They cover almost the exact, well, if I put them right together, they cover the exact same amount of area. So I know from their pictures that they're equivalent. Now can I prove it with math? So what can I do to get, so what can I do to two-thirds to get four-sixths? Let's see, I could multiply by two. If I multiply both sides by two, two times two is four, three times two is 6. And so you see there I have equivalent fractions because I can multiply by the exact same number and get this fraction right here. So I can, this so this fraction is the same thing as this fraction. Alright, last one. If I can stop going backwards. Alright, now here I have a little different scenario. I have right here I have 6 eighths and right here I have 3 fourths. So now I'm going from bigger to smaller. So let's see, are they the same first of all? Bam! Look at that. They are the same area. So right there, that's the same. So now let's see if I can do it with math. Now remember, equivalent fractions, I can either multiply or divide. So let's see. I'm going from bigger to smaller, so I'm going to have to divide. What can I divide to get 3 fourths? Hmm. If I divide both sides by 2, I can get 3 fourths. 6 divided by 2 is going to be 3. 8 divided by 2 is going to be 4. And so you see that these two fractions are equivalent. I can prove it with pictures, and I can prove it with math. So that's the first step in this problem. The next step is going to be taking a fraction, so right here is my fraction, and, and finding an equivalent fraction for it. Now remember, I do this by simply multiplying or dividing. So, let's go ahead and practice. I'll find some equivalent fractions. So, I need to simply multiply or divide by the exact same number. Let's see, 2. 2 is an easy number. I'm just pulling that out of midair. 2 is a very easy number. So, 4 times 2 is going to be 8. 10 times 2 is going to be 
20. So right there, I have an equivalent fraction. 4 tenths is the same thing as 8 twentieths because I multiply by the same number. How about let's divide this time? Let's divide by 2 because that's once again really easy. 4 divided by 2 is going to be 2. 10 divided by 2 is going to be 5. So look at that. 2 fifths is equal to 8 twentieths, which is also equal to 4, 20, 4 tenths. Let's do one more. Let's multiply by a bigger number this time. Let's multiply by 5. So 4 times 5 is going to be 20. 5 times 10 is going to be 50. So look at that. I have four equivalent fractions to 4 tenths, and all I did was multiply or divide by the exact same number. Now, that was the first step. This is the next step. Now, something, so equivalent fractions is a big idea. We're going to focus in on one particular aspect called simplest form. Another term is reducing. Hopefully that should ring some bells for you. You've probably been doing that for quite some time now. So reducing your simplest form is the idea of taking a fraction and finding its smallest equivalent fraction. So I want to take that fraction right there, and I want to make it the smallest I can. Now remember, we find equivalent fractions by multiplying or dividing. When we multiply, we make bigger numbers, bigger fractions. When we divide, we make smaller numbered fractions. So let's go ahead and divide. Now with this, I can pull out any number that both divides by. Now let's see. 3 won't work, because 28 and 20 don't divide into, uh, 3 does not divide into 20 or 28. But 2 works. Let's divide by 2. 20 divided by 2 is going to be 10. 28 divided by 2 is going to be 14. Now here, I have 10 14ths. Ooh, if I multiply by 2 again, I can solve this very quickly. So 20, uh, two, we're going to divide by 2 once again. I'm going to multi make even smaller. So 10 divided by 2 is going to be uh, 5. And 14 divided by 2 is going to be 7. And this, I can't go anywhere with that. So that is stuck right there. 5 sevenths. So 28 is equal to 5 sevenths. That's the smallest equivalent fraction. Now, this is one way to do it. One way. I like this way a lot, but there is one other way. Using what we learned yesterday with the greatest common factor, if we find the greatest common factor of these two numbers, we can use that greatest common factor to divide and get its smallest equivalent, or the simplest form. So right here I'm going to find the greatest common factor, so 20 and 28, the factors are 1, oh, there we go, 1, 20, 2, 10, and 4, and 5. Those are the factors of 20. For 28, it's going to be 1, 28, 2, 14, and then 4, and 7. So you see right here, I have my greatest common factor is going to be 4. So if I divide, and use a different color on purpose, so if I did 20, 28 divided by 4, 20 divided by 4 is going to be 5, 28 divided by 4 is going to be 7. So you see I got the exact same answer I got here, only it was actually a little simpler. I used the greatest common factor and solved. Let's do one more. I know there are two on the board, but we're going to do one more on purpose. So right here, we're going to do this right here, 14 and 14 49ths. So 14, so I'm going to find the greatest common factor first. So that's going to be 1, 14, 2, and 7. Those are the factors of 14. Factors of 49 are going to be 1, 49, and 7. You should see my greatest common factor is right there. So I divide both sides by 7. 14 divided by 7 is going to be 2. 49 divided by 7 is going to be 7. And so there I have my smallest form, simplest form, using greatest common factor. The very last step in this process is to take this idea of simplest form or equivalent fractions and put it into word problems. Let's read this. It says, a pet store stocks 36 different types of cat food, 42 different types of dog food, that's key, 18 types of bird food, and 24 other pet foods. In simplest form, what fraction of the types of foods are cat foods? So I want to focus on the cat foods. Now it says what fraction. So I need to find, I need to find, so uh, the fraction of cat foods compared to all the other foods. Well it says here I have 36 different types. So that's going to be my top number. If I can write through. Oop. There we go. Uh -huh. Let's try it this way. There we go. 
So I have 36 different types of cat food. Now the issue is, I need to know, I need to compare my types of cat food to all other food. So I find that by simply adding up all the types of cat food. So 36 plus 42 plus 18 plus 24. Pull up a calculator to do that really quickly, and it equals 120. So there are 120 types of, cat, uh, types of food. So that's going to be my bottom number, because that's a total number. The types of foods are cat foods. Okay, so that's the total foods, and this is my cat foods. Now here, I'm going to, I can either find the greatest common factor, or I can just divide by easy numbers. Now with this one right here, I see even numbers. As soon as I see even numbers, I should think 2. I can divide both sides by 2. 36 divided by 2 is going to be 18. 120 divided by 2 is going to be 60. I see even numbers. Let's keep going. Divide by 2. 18 divided by 2 is going to be 9. 60 divided by 2 is going to be 30. Now here, I don't have even numbers. I have 9 and 30. Hmm, oh, I could use 3. If I divide both sides by 3, 9 divided by 3 is going to be 3. 30 divided by 3 is going to be 10. Can I draw that, get that any smaller? No, I cannot. So that, I divide by 3 there. So that is my answer. Now let's do this also with the greatest common factor. If you work it out, the greatest common factor is actually going to be 12. So we're going to do it like this. 36 over 120 and divide both sides by 12 because that's the greatest common factor. I did a book, I looked at the book and it tells you right there. Divide by 12, 36 divided by 12 is going to be 3. 120 divided by 12 is going to be 10. And so there you have my answer. There, there you have the answer. So well, ladies and gentlemen, that is the lesson. This is going to be, the, the key is going to be to simply multiply or divide by the exact same number. You can't multiply one number by one, uh, by the, the top number by one number, the bottom by number by another number. It has to be the exact same number, but if you do that, you can still get equivalent fractions. Your homework tonight is going to be page 136, 6 through 18 even. Once again, page 136, 6 through 18 even. Have a wonderful night, and we'll see you all tomorrow.